Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, praise him. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy. Come on, come on, he gets the glory. Yes, he does. Yes. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, Lord. Come on now. Yes, Lord. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Yes, Come on, he's worthy. Come on. Come on and praise him. Come on and praise him. It's all about us. It's all about God. I don't know what you come to do, but I come to praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, from the bottom of my heart to the depth of my soul. Yes, Lord. Somebody say completely yes. Completely. Yes. Come on, help me say y'all now. My soul say yes. He say, I love you, Lord. I love you. Come on now. I love you. From the bottom of my heart to the depth of my soul, I love you. I really do. I really do. My soul. Say yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. You know, I'm going to be very selfish today. I'm not going to look at who came or who didn't come. Because this word is for me. Hallelujah. But I'm going to share it with you. So you can eat too. But this is for me. So if you see me acting a little crazy, I'm eating this thing. Sometimes we go to our trials and our tribulation, and sometimes we don't know what to do or where to turn. And even though we know there's one help, and that's God. So before I go any farther, let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, Lord, I just thank you, God, for this opportunity you are giving me, God, your humble servant, Lord, as I come before you and your people. Lord, Lord I ask that you will move me all out, of, all out of the way to flesh, Lord, and let your spirit arise and my enemy be scattered. Lord, I ask right now those in the sound of my voice will hear you, Father, and not me. And so as I decrease, God, as you increase, God, they will receive your word, Lord. They will eat your word. They will live your word, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Boys of the Lord International Ministry, I want to say also in the presence of my pastor, Dr. Pastor Samuel Rivers. Praise the Lord. And I say that because I believe I'm going to share this word with him too. You know, it's not easy doing what you got to do when you got to work so hard. But you got to keep pressing your way. So I want you all to keep him up in prayer. Keep him up in prayer. Because as a leader, you only see what you see, but you don't know what all he got on his plate. And sometimes there's so much you got to deal with. You understand that? So much. And as a minister myself and a pastor, I know. All righty. So now today's topic will be, it's not what it looked like, but it is what it is. It's not what it looked like, but it is what it is. You know, sometimes we face our trials and our tribulations that we go through and we're wondering, and, you know, Lord, there's no way out. But if we look at this, this, the situation and the circumstance, guess what? Then we're going to stay there, we're going to idle, we're going to wall in that mess. But we've got to remember, long we serve God, there's always a way out. So it is what it is. God always have the last word, no matter what. Hallelujah. We deal with it, we face. The word of God says, is anything too hard for God? So I want you all to remember now, today, every time you see me, some people say, well, you talk about tithes and offerings, but well, that's part of my living, you know, and, and, and I believe that that is my source, you know, I, I have to do that, hallelujah, to, to stay balanced and to, and to stay focused, hallelujah, because if I do that, I believe, hallelujah, that God will do what he said he would do for me to promise, that if I ask anything in his name, in his name that's what he do. It's something when you can ask God and don't feel guilty about it because you know what he's, he's going to do, what he said he's going to do. So remember now, the topic, it's not what it looked like, but it is what it is. Some people might call you dirty, might call you nasty. I'm just going to let the Holy Spirit just have his way. 
But you know who you are. You don't know what I look like, but I am who, I, who God said I am. Hallelujah. You can change any situation as long as you know that God is in charge. Hallelujah. So I'm going to ask you to get your Bible and turn with me to Genesis, the fourth chapter. Fourth chapter. I want you all to pray with me. Keep, keep me in prayer. That I don't move too fast. I don't want you to receive this. It's not what it looked like, but it is what it is. And before I, I read these scriptures, I'm going to do a scripture that Pastor did last week. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. It reads like this. Honor the Lord with your wealth and your with your first fruit of all your produce. With your wealth and your first fruit. I want you all to remember that. First. Not second, not third. Not what you think. First. Then your barns will be full with plenty, and your vats will be bursting with wine. Now in the beginning, if you see the first chapter of Genesis, we talk about Adam and Eve, who God created first. And God gave to them, paraphrasing, two sons, and, and Cain was the first one, and Abel was the second. But they had a responsibility. There was workers. One was a farmer. And I believe that one, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Pray for me as I go for us. Um, let me read this right now. That Cain brought forth the first fruit of the ground, and Abel was a sheep herder. Okay? Now, even though Cain brought forth the first, and God would inquire of us to give him the first first, I want you to remember now, it's not what it looked like, but it is what it is. Sometimes we look at our situation and we say to ourselves, we don't have enough. But if you think about that, you don't get enough to who? Because you're paying your car note, you're paying your car insurance, you're paying your house note, you know, you're paying your rent, you're putting clothes on your back, you're eating, and all that stuff like this. You, I mentioned everybody except for God. But you got to remember, it's not what it looked like, but it is what it is. What it is is that you're leaving God out. And God is your source. And then from the very beginning, God said, look, I'm going to bless you. In return, I want you to bless me back. But bring me in the first. I want the best of the best. Paraphrasing now, because two brothers, hallelujah, had a duty to, to give God of the first. One give God only common wealth. Another one give God from his heart. See, if you want to bless somebody, bless them from your heart. You see, because then it means something. It's going to grow. You can look to receive that thing back. If you're going to love somebody, love from the heart. Because it's not what it looked like, but it is what it is. We got to look real deep. Because if it's not coming from the inside, guess what? You're missing out on the best part. You got to see the heart. Now, this is what happens when we do sometimes. We get jealous of people that have more than we have. You understand that? Because you don't know what brother or sister so-and-so doing. Praise the Lord. They bring the tithes in. Every week and give unto the Lord, not the pastor or the man, but it was a law that was ordained by God. It's a law that you got to keep no matter what. And y'all, I try my best. I don't know nobody else, but to honor God with my first, to give God I can give. Now, and if I look at some of the things other people have, well, they got a nice car, and, a, and my dream is a, a Beamer, you know, or a Lexus. I tell myself, well, you're getting older now. You're 59, and you get ready to retire, and you're doing this job, and you deserve to have that in your retirement car. But that's a want. That's not a need. If you want to bless God, you've got to keep giving God what unto God, what belongs to God, and the season what belongs to the season of God, or what, and wait on your blessing. Because it's a want. No good thing that God will withheld from you if you don't look at with your situation, your circumstance. My sister so-and-so got so-and-so, so I got to look good, too. You know, I'm going to show so-and-so what I'm all about, but then you ain't showing God nothing. You're not giving God nothing. So God said in this scripture right here is that, look, brother, because you didn't give me what belongs to me, I don't respect you. Because it said in the scripture, he respected Abel, and he didn't respect the king. 
So that tells me that he's going to respect me if I pay my tithe and reject me if I don't. It's the word. Hallelujah. And I'm not talking about Minister Chisholm or, 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 or my best buddy, Michael Corley over there. They can talk all the trash about me all they want to. But I'm talking about God. Who is my help? I'm being rejected by him because I can't give him what belongs to him in the first place. Now, religious mind person will say, man, you can talk all you want to. I ain't hear you. But a spiritual minded person will say, well, you know, that's the truth. Yeah. See, a spiritual minded person will mind the things of the spirit. And, and a religious minded person will mind the things of the flesh. They will tune God out. I don't want to hear that. Right. You're not getting what's yours in the first place. You understand that? It don't belong to you in the first place. It's all God. Thank you, Jesus. So when I bring this word, it's not what it looked like, but it is what it is. And I'm going to get into it a little, little later on. He's going to hear something, not from James White, but from God. Because y'all don't know what I have on my plate. As a business owner, if things ain't going too well like it should. Now I can choose to say, well, Lord, I'm paying this bill, and I'm paying that bill, and I got to cut back on you. Hear what I just say. Look who I'm talking to. The scripture said, Will a man rob God? Back up a little bit. He said, Because James Christ, you're getting confused. You went away from my ordinance now. You went away from my law. I told you to bring this tithe and offering to the storehouse. So they might be me. Break it down. We got a beautiful sanctuary. Come on, y'all. It's not what it looked like, but it is what it is. We got many chairs out there that are empty, but I speak life to every one of them. Amen. That God will bring in people, spiritual-minded people, that will know how to love from the heart and know who God really is. Amen. I don't get how a man beat me down. One thing I know, and as a living testament, I stand you before God is that I have a personal relationship with God, and I'm very jealous about it. Because if somebody attacked me in my spirituality, I'm going to say, no, it's not what it looks like, but it is what it is. I'm all that and more. All right. All right. You just don't see it because your heart ain't right. right. Hallelujah. You can't pay your tithes because your, your heart ain't right. All right. All right. You feel what I'm saying? Hallelujah. So, kid, why are you arguing? Church, why are you arguing? The word of God said, you could have got blessed too. Right, then he went on to say, look, man, you could have been accepted. So now, I will be not respected and not accepted because I decided to keep what I have in my pocket and don't give God what's rightfully his in the first place. Our church is not what it looked like, but it is what it is. For if God be for us, who can be against us? Who? Now we can quote those scriptures because it's so easy for us to, to we know them. But it means something. If God be for us, God say, I'm for you, but you ain't never been to me. Because a lot of us got that kid mentality. We short God. Well, Lord, you know. I only made it by so much this week. Hey, God, take it's the same paycheck you made last week before you have. <laughs> but see, Satan does it. They come in there and it can confuse your mind for the lust of this world. Yeah. And you enticed by your own lust. Nobody tell you. To, you did it on your own. Yeah. You lusting after that thing. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. That nice car. That nice apartment. That, all the other stuff you with nice clothes and, and everything that you put before God. You ever imagine that? I cannot get up here and preach this word if I don't do what, I, what this word say. If I preach it, I got to live it. If I teach it, I got to eat it. Yeah, yeah. Now, I ain't all that. The word of God said we all fall short of the glory of God. But the thing I'm about to say, a just man falls seven times, but when he falls, he gets back up. Some people believe when I'm in church today, so I have to pay my time today. Mm -hmm. You know? Oh, I'll just double up on it next week. But if you look at the sanctuary, the lights gonna get cut off if you don't pay. Right. You know, 
you tell Pastor Lee later. You know, if you don't pay the mortgage or the rent, the man can kick us out. No, we got a prosperous church. I'm not beating nobody down. But I'm saying as a man of God, you, when you got a business to run, and the ministry is a business. You understand? And if we are all about our father's business, we shouldn't have to have someone. And I don't beat nobody up with the word, because if I come from the scripture, you can't tell me I'm, I'm lying. You, you understand? But nobody has to tell you what is true. You should know the truth and truth will set you free. Some of us don't want to be free. I'm looking for greater and better things for me, even as I go to my trials right now in my business. Praise the Lord. Because it's not what it looked like, but it is what it is. Saying you're not going to take away what God already gave me. God promised me. So I got to walk through this thing. See, when you go to your trials and tribulations, you got to walk through this thing. Hold on to the promise. Hold on to your belief. And do not doubt in your heart that whatsoever God said he would do, he would do. But we got to put that place where we rooted and grounded in the word of God where we ain't moving and going nowhere. In spite of how it might look, how it might seem, I'm rooted and grounded and I'm not going nowhere. And guess what? Because the brother chose not to honor God, God, God says, sin lies at your door. So if you don't honor God with your first, sin lies at your door. Amen? Amen. And we talk in the scripture again to this one we love. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. But yet still, that spirit of fear coming at us one time to pay that tithe, and we be tormented. Because for some reason, we just can't, can't give it to God. Because we very selfish, self-centered. Because I got to do this for me. I got to take care of that. But don't you know if you take care of God, he'll take care of you? Huh? It ain't no way you should be tormented. I tell that, that devil, you a liar. Matter of fact, when I came today, I said, you know what, God, because this message for me, I told you I'm very selfish. I'm giving God a little bit more this week. You understand? I'm not going to be one of those preachers that keep my hand in the pocket. I need y'all to bring another $20, $100 up here. <laughs> I saw that when I was beyond in the ministry, you know. And I'm saying, when you want to take your hand out of your pocket. <laughs> if you want to talk and live in deep breath, partake of the word. You know? Sometimes I think we say we love somebody and we, look, we wait around for that person to fall. So we can say, I tell you, you ain't been about this. I told you that you're not supposed to have a church. You know? I told you that you're kind of minor. Because it's never been about you. It's about the Lord's business. Hallelujah. God is good. Now, one thing I love about the Lord is that his word never come back void. Hallelujah. Isaiah 55, 11 says, So my word be that giveth that growth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me, to me void, but it shall accomplish, again, paraphrasing. See, if you will read God's word, then it's supposed to accomplish something. If you've been born again, then something you've been changed. It don't take a man or a woman pastor to get up here every time to tell a believer which way to go because you're supposed to know. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But it would accomplish what it was, what it was sent out to do. And it would prosper in what it was sent out to do. So if I give God what, his, what belongs to him, I'm going to accomplish something. James White, hold on. God's going to turn things around for you. It's going to work in your favor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because it's not what it looked like, but it is what it is. Why? Because God got the last word. And because you, the word is in you, I'm a walking word. Hallelujah. See, when you walk with your walking word, you walk through all barriers. Uh, get out of my way, devil. I rebuke you right now. God said, I will make my, my enemies my footstools. I'm going to walk all over you. 
You understand? Amen. But you're going to be put to the test every time. I want you all to do something for me. Now, what I'm actually to do, don't worry about it. I'm not going to take your money. But I'm going to do something. I want you to get some money in your hand. And then when I tell you to hold that money up, I'm going to say something over that money. Okay? You got your money, Mr. Chisholm? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, everybody should have some money. Even if you got your tithe, hold that up. When I tell you. I want you to hold it up right now. See, it's not what it looked like. But it is what it is. God's going to double this. God's going to triple this. What triple this? Because I'm a giver. I'm a believer. Now what's God in this scripture do? What are you going to do? Hold it back down now. Turn with me to 2 Kings. The 20th chapter. Now this is a perfect example of it's not what it looks like. I mean, Second King. I'm sorry. Twentieth chapter. Now, this is Second King, the twentieth chapter. Now, I'm gonna read from one to six, and I'm gonna break it down to you. What I, what, it, what I'm saying is, it's not what it looked like, but it is what it is. And any ministers can tell you that when it, God give you uh, a topic, you you look for the scriptures or something to. You know, to elaborate on what you're talking about. And it reads like this. And those days when Hezekiah, sick unto death, and the prophet Isaac, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, Set thy house in order, for thou should die and not live. Say, it's not what it looked like, but it is what it is. It is what God said it is. When you face your trials and tribulations, if you settle for what man said, guess what? It is what it is. You know what I mean? It's going to be that. You understand? It's going to be destruction. But here's this man on his sick bed. And the prophets come to him and prophesied to him and said, God said, set your house in order. Get things ready. Somebody visiting you in the hospital. Oh, Sister Brown, get ready to die. Doctor said, no more hope for him. Might last a week or two. But you got a God. It's never what man said it looked like. It is what it is to you. I'll tell you what Hezekiah did. Second verse. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, Wow. So who, who did he saw? Even though the prophet said, Set the house in order, you're going to die. But he turned his face to the wall. And he sought God. It ain't over until God says it's over. It's never what it looked like. But it is what it is. It is what you say it is. Death and life is in the power of your town. You can speak life to that situation, speak death to it. This is a faith and also a tide. <laughs> and I mix it up so everybody can be happy. Sermon. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because those who come to God first got to believe that God is God. And he is a rewarder. Or those who diligently see that those who diligently seek him. Some people weaving all over the place. Run a commercial sometimes I feel like I'm not something I don't. You know? Sometimes I feel like paint eyes, sometimes I don't. Pastor, I understand. How pastor can understand when pastor got all this? This is a business. You know what I love about him too? And we got a growing church in there. And this, you see the cameraman right here, one like this? I have a ministry. And before he came, I talked to pastor about it. This is part of my ministry. But this is what I believe. So Facebook, radio ministry, all of this is going to receive in this. It's not about me. It's about helping others. I don't know how many times I... 
I give out of my pocket of my needs. See, when you give out of your need, you tell the God, I really do understand. And thank you, Lord. And I'm waiting for the manifestation. I'm expecting the expectation to happen. I don't know when it's coming, God, but I know it's coming. And then when you give, you have to be joyful about all oh, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, I was able to plant a seed on sister or brother so and so day and paid my tithe. Hallelujah. And I saw somebody out of the street wanted something to eat. I took them to get something to eat. And Lord, I think that I could have do that. Lord, because I know they all come from you, God, because you changed my heart. If anybody went to some trials, I think I did. <laughs> Man, I leave you. And I say, go ahead. You know, man and woman leave you. But God, please stay. In spite of my mess, in spite of what I'm dealing with, and God, in spite of my shortcoming, and even though you say, you can't be double minded, I never said I was perfect. The word of God said, we all fall short of the glory of God. You understand? But I'm going to hold on to God no matter what. Amen. You can go. Sometimes we get in a relationship, I tell you, going back and forth. And we hold on to something that you know ain't rooted and grounded. Amen. You always hear me say that because I care about my people like that because I've been through some experience. And then when I look back on my, my, on my life and I, and I look things over, I say, you know what? You know that before you bite off that apple. <laughs> but you bite them anyway. Yeah. And then you bite them again anyway. And then you bite them again anyway. When are you going to stop biting? You see what I'm talking about? And you're biting a rotten apple. People can be saved, but not delivered. You see the difference? You have to be born again. There's something about the Holy Ghost. See, the Holy Ghost, we got to receive this word today. It's not me because you know why? You know the truth. And the Holy Ghost is guiding you, teaching you in the way, in the truth. It's not me. Hallelujah. But here's a guy turned his wall, his face toward the Lord. Guess what? He was getting ready to talk to God. Hallelujah. Third verse says, He received thee, O Lord. Remember now how I have walked before thee in the truth with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. Here's a guy wept so. Wow. When I read that, you talk to God like that? Remember God when I walked before you? Ooh, who can see that? He's been in trouble. He was facing that. But he said, oh, no, Lord, you brought me so far to leave me. I don't give a man say, God, I want to believe your report. Whose report you going to believe? When trials come your way, tribulations come your way, storms come your way, hallelujah, you're going to put God on the back burner and relieve everybody else? You're going to say, no, God, I'm going with you unto death. See, what your mind can transform, you're not the same person. So the word of God said, let this mind be in Christ, also be in you, so you're thinking differently. Hallelujah. And I got a witness. I got a daughter. She's almost, you know, can I tell you honey? Okay. But she's up there, way up there. <laughs> and she saw my walk. She saw daddy when daddy was down. When daddy didn't bring home the groceries, when daddy didn't pay the rent, see some bad things too now. But see, something happened to daddy when God came and touched daddy and, 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 and regulate daddy's mind and, and give daddy a new walk and a new talk and a new way of thinking. Daddy, daddy became daddy. 21 years now, strong, clean, drugs and alcohol. But daddy can, can say, honey, you can come home and live with me for a while. Then I don't. And then when you let him come home, it's hard to get him up, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but, but then I when, when you leave him? <laughs> but, but it's good to catch them when they fall. Because you love them. And, and, and they know you better because kids know. Some family you can have the function home. Some people, even in my, my business, I've seen people cuss in front of the kids and say all kinds of stuff. Hallelujah. My daughter might say, Daddy, and she, she, I never heard her curse me. She 
He never stood up to me but one time. That's when I was on drug and alcohol. I tell her, you're going to respect me. And she said these words, which cut me. How can I respect you when you don't respect yourself? All right, people. All right. So guess what, church? How can God respect you All right. Come on now. when you don't respect yourself? I also remember back in the days, we used to say it's tight, but it's right. Isn't that? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Fourth verse. Now he just praying to God, right? Because he knows God got the answer. See, when you give God what belongs to him, which is this money I told you. No matter what it looks like, it is what it is, because it's more what you think you see. Because you got the ability to call those things a peanut and do it at work. Do you understand me? So this $20 can be $100 if you speak your life to it, because when you give it to God, He multiply it. Hallelujah. And it came to pass the fold after Isaac was going out into the middle court. That the word of the Lord came to him saying. See, when you pray to God, it's all saying, it may not come when you warn him, but he's always on time, or you will be there one time. Expect that to come. Because even though he was facing death, he said, I know a God that said I should live. And he prayed so hard. Sometimes we, we get in our trials. Lord, you know I only make this one. I don't know what I want to pay you tonight. I really do, but Lord, I can do. Pray. Give me first. You always got to prove to God what is good and acceptable. Unto God, not you. If I'm going to steal from anybody else, I ain't going to steal from God. Because I fear him. Like I said earlier, anybody else can leave me. Go ahead. Because I know who I am. I knew who I am. Praise the Lord. But after a while, God heard the man's prayer. After a while, God said, look here. I, you go and you tell, hallelujah, I got to read this, my captain of my people. Look, I got this something here. First he said he's going to die. And because he saw God, God bless him. Of my people. <laughs> I turned things around for him. Yeah. He don't have to die. I'm going to grant him 15 more years. Right. Woo! Yeah. Come on now. 15 more years. Because he trusts God. So today, I'm going to ask you to do something. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you to trust God. I'm going to ask you to help yourself. I'm not asking you to help no man. Help yourself. Because it's you in the need of help. Because everything that you got don't belong to you. The gold and the silver, my Bible tell me, all belongs to God. You own nothing. Nothing, I say. And I mean, literally, we don't. Don't you know that text this morning woke you up? The Spirit of God. Last year, 2014, how many funerals did we witness? But yet still, he smiled on you. Oh, yeah. Get up in the morning, you say, Lord, only, only thank you for saving me and healing me and delivering me, God. Thank you for covering my family. He took a hedge around your family. Yes. Hallelujah. We got so much to praise God for. Yes. The worship leader was saying this morning. We don't need nobody to pump us up. Give me a couple more minutes, y'all. And I'll be out of the way. It's not about me. It's all about God. All right? Second Corinthians 9 and 10 said, Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiplied your seed, sowed, and increase the fruit of your righteousness. So nothing you give to God would stay stagnated. He will multiply the seed. He'll multiply it. 
but it's up for you to believe. Hallelujah, it's up for you to believe. Turn with me to Luke, the ninth chapter. You know, it never goes the way um, you want it. But um, I let God have his way, the Holy Spirit. Now, this story I'm going to tell you about, it's not what it looked like, but it is what it is. Again, how God will blow your mind. And I'm going to do this in closing. Now, God sent his disciples out to say, I'm going to give you authority and power that he was sick. Hallelujah, in the Lord. Hallelujah. And then this, this is supposed to paraphrase it. Meet back up with Jesus after a while. But when they met with Jesus, Jesus had over 5,000 people around him. And the disciples said, Lord, what are we going to do with all these people? He said, should we send them back into the city? And Jesus said, no, these boys are hungry. Then Jesus said, then the, 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 the disciples said, how are we going to feed them? Jesus said, what do you have? Paraphrase. He said, we only got two fish and five loaves of bread. Perfect example. It's not what it looked like, but it is what it is. If you trust God. But here's money. So the disciples said, well, how are we going to do this? Jesus said, give it to me. That's what I told you to lift that money up. See, that's what you're going to do today. You're going to give God what's right for his. And God's going to do what he did in this story for you. Praise, he's going to multiply your earnings. Because you refuse to rob God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you're tired of being stagnated. You want to be blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. See, when they give Jesus the two fish and the five loaf of bread, Disciples looked around, paraphrasing, and said, All these people, Jesus said, I want you to separate them into 50s. Over 5,000 people. You only got two loaves and five loaves of bread. You know what Jesus did? See, he's your interceder. What you give it him, give it to him, he give it to God. See, he took that two fish and five loaves of bread, he took hold up to God, and God blessed him. And guess what? Every time the disciples came, they had bread, they had fish. And don't start off with two. It's never what it looked like, but it is what it is. It's faith in your heart. Who you are in Christ. Hallelujah. The good news is, they start off with two fish and five more, but after they fed everybody, it was an overflow. Right. See, God get ready to overflow you. With his blessing. Yes. He, he's getting ready to bless you above and beyond your imagination. Yes. But it takes something that's in you. Yes. It takes the faith that you say that you have yes. to move God. Yes. Hallelujah. To call those things to be not the death that do the world. It's not your imagination. God said, I'm going to go above that. But I'm going to bless you. Yes. Hallelujah. And after a while, everybody was fed. Yes. And they had 12 baskets left over. Yes, yes. When you get to pay your tithes and offering, you always will have some money left over in the bank, in your pocketbook, in the Bible, wherever you hide it at. God will reveal it to you in that new season. But you have to trust God. In closing, will a man rob God? How, you say, have you robbed me? Straight up. Tithes and offering. And because you have robbed me, you're cursed with a curse. None of us is cursed with a curse today. We bless. I thank God for voice of the Lord in the national ministry for the time I'm here. It's a time for the season for everything. I'm not saying I believe and I'm happy where I'm at. I'm gonna do more teaching on the radio and even here if God says so. But it's not about me because I believe this right here is gonna fill the house. Because this here make believers, you know, money's the root of all evil. The love of money. 
You see what I'm saying? But once we learn to release this, this thing, the blessing will come in. You see, once we learn to turn it loose, we don't love it more, we love God. And I'm going to speak this too. And I'm going to let you go. I'm going to go back to religion. I'm all over the place. Now, don't ever love nobody more than you love God. Don't put he or she first. And if you're hurting or you're going through, say, God, remove this pain from me. Remove this person from me, God. Because I know this is not you. I want somebody to pray with me, God. I want somebody to study with me, God. I want somebody I can laugh with, God. I, I want somebody I can be myself with. All the stuff I learned in my past, you know, like going to, I got the pokies over there knowing me for years, and they seen some bumps in the road, and I thank God for real friends. Hallelujah. Because anytime I call on them, if I need them, they're there. Even with money. They saw my ministry. They saw me in and out of the prisons and, and what like this. They know my heart. And I thank God for them because times when I went through with my business, hallelujah, I had people I could call on that I know would give me a good word, not somebody would gossip like pastor say, but somebody would know the truth to tell me the truth. And I thank God for that. I thank God for Minister Ross, uh, Prophet Ross and, and Ella Carly and Minister Chisholm, all you guys who came. And my daughter, everybody who came. And I thank God for all the ministers. And I'm asking y'all to pray for me. Pray for Voice of the Lord Ministry. Because the Voice of the Lord Ministry, I'm going to tell y'all something. Years ago when God called me into ministry, I believe I saw this church in a vision. That's why I moved. And what I saw is coming to life right now. This church belongs to pastors. We all ministers here, and we all can minister. But let's be real about it. Let's help one another. Let's help the man of God.